What's going on, everybody? C4 here today. Quickly, this is going to be a quicker one because there's only so much you can talk about an offensive lineman. But we need to get it out there because offensive line is a massive, massive position need for plenty of teams. And I do think that this year's tackle class is as strong as it's been over the last couple of years where it hasn't been particularly strong. Obviously, that makes sense. Uh, but I do believe that there are five potential offensive tackles that should go in the first round of this year's draft class. And as a Philadelphia Eagle fan, we may need to get a tackle to prepare for life beyond the bodyguard himself. Jason Peters, so this is somewhat valuable, but I'm not going to try to act like I watched 900 hours of tape on offensive linemen. I've just watched, um, based off reputation, games that I've fully watched of said team and be like, man, that running back is getting a bunch of yards. I wonder why. And then you might see like a kid, an occasional pancake and, and looking at just quick film videos on YouTube. I'm going to try to give you guys just a, just a you know general ballpark of the top five offensive guards and centers, and we're going to do the top five tackles so without further ado looking at offensive guards and centers at number five i'm gonna talk about will hernandez from utep we all know my thoughts and feelings on utep but said running back aaron jones had outstanding stat lines every year he's there and even this year utep even though they've been terrible they have been able to run the ball well so will hernandez at guard six foot three 330 pounds i think he'll go probably in the third round he's a first team central usa in 2016 he was a central usa freshman team in 2014 so he's been producing at a fairly high level and there's plenty of longevity there he's consistent he's not just a flash in the pan and will be a solid run blocking guard um for a run focused team to grab in the third round Go number four. It's gonna be a player I've seen plenty of, and that's Martez Ivy from Florida, offensive guard, six foot five, three hundred and five pounds. I think Martez Ivy will go in the third round. He's inconsistent. Some games he'll be an absolute animal, and then other games he will get pushed around. But the reason why I have him ahead of Will Hernandez is he can play offensive tackle. Uh, you probably would much rather have him at right tackle because he is a run blocker at heart. Uh, he was a SEC All-Freshman in 2015. Like I said, that's why I have him ahead of Will Hernandez. A little bit more versatile. Anytime you can get uh, a guard that's a, that's a starter at guard, a much better guard than tackle, but can swing up the tackle in case of injury, you know, kind of a last-ditch emergency type player, that gives you some extra value. That's what I look to look for in my offensive lineman. Going to number three, it is going to be Billy Price, the center from Ohio State. He's 6'4". He's 312 pounds. I think he'll go somewhere between the second and the third round. He's the top center. It feels like he's been the top center in college football for like the last three years, but now he's finally getting ready to declare as a senior. Uh, he was a first-team All-American in 2016. He was also a first-team Big Ten in 2016, and I think that he should be the first center off the board. And really, you know, you got to think about it. When was the last time a legit center got picked Real, real high. Like Ryan Kelly from Alabama is the only other one. I think Billy Price is really close to that same kind of range that um, that he was in there. So, you know, obviously, Ohio State, Alabama. There's a little rivalry there. But I do think Billy Price is the top center in this year's draft class and has been a big part of, you know, all those talented running backs. He was there when Zeke was there. Uh, he was there last year with Mike Weber. And he's there this year with Mike Weber and J.K. Dobbins. They can run the ball well. Plus, you know, you got the scrambling QBs like J.T. Barrett that he's been able to protect for. Uh, going number two, it is going to be Braden Smith, the offensive guard from Auburn, six foot six, three hundred and five pounds. I think he's going to go in the second round. I always thought he played a little bit of tackle, but I guess not. I was looking at his team page. That guy could have sworn uh, the game I saw Auburn and was it Clemson? Was it Louisville? Whatever the first game was at the beginning of the year, I swear he was playing tackle. But I guess he's never played tackle. He's a no-note guard. He was a 2014 All-SEC freshman, All-SEC first team in 2016. Great size, great athleticism. People are saying that he's going to test very, very well at the combine. And I, I'm just wondering, maybe if he tests really, really well, gets in that Lane Johnson, Garrett Bowles type range, our team's going to look at his size and say, maybe we can put him at right tackle. Um, but yeah, definitely anytime you get SEC, uh, maybe it's my SEC bias, but anytime there's a really good SEC lineman, it means they're going up against consistently guys that are going to make the NFL at some day, uh, on opposing defensive lines. So a uh, good talent there in Brayden Smith, but the number one interior offensive lineman is Quentin Nelson from Notre Dame, uh, an offensive guard, six foot five, 330 pounds, first round grade. I think he's going to be uh, at least first round, uh, 
Can't see second round. I'd be very surprised at that. Then again, it's going to be tough what teams are really going to need an offensive guard, but I, I figure there will be plenty. Plus, he has experience at left tackle. So again, kind of like when we're talking about with Martez Ivy, you get that added value, the versatility of an offensive lineman. Uh, in 2016, he was a second team All-American, but he's going to look at Notre Dame's games. They have just been able to run the ball. Be it the quarterback or the running back seems every week, or at least every other week, there's 300-some yard rushing for the Notre Dame fighting Irish and Nelson is a massive part of that so yeah I'm gonna say we will see one first round guy maybe two in Braden Smith but then the rest the the second third and fourth round there's gonna be some good value there for interior offensive linemen moving to the top five tackles at number five I'm going with Mitch Hyatt from Clemson six foot five 305 pounds I think he'll go in the second round could go first round if there's a real big run on tackles and a team wants to grab one unfortunately Philly might be in that range uh, and 20, he's a 2015 first team all freshman, 2016 first team all ACC, and he is a left tackle. He is six foot five. He's barely 300 pounds, so I think you know maybe in the pros, unless he wants to bulk up or unless he has the, maybe he doesn't have the frame to necessarily bulk up. That is more of a right tackle side uh, size. I don't know. I've always been I've always been partial because I've, I've had Jason Peters that I want my my left tackles to be our monster, our big mauler. And then our right tackles will be the more athletic guy. But uh, he has played predominantly left tackle for Clemson, protecting for Deshaun Watson and the like. Very talented playmaker. Going to number four, it is going to be Trey Adams from the University of Washington. Six foot eight, 330 pounds. He is currently injured. Should be healthy by the time the combine rolls around. He was a 2016 all pack 12 team. Uh, he plays left tackle. I think he'll go in the first round. That is tremendous size, tremendous range. Again, there is a little bit of cloudiness about if he's going to be healthy or not for the draft. But, I mean, this you, you can't go wrong. There's going to be so many decent tackles to grab in the first and second rounds. Uh, I think Trey Adams, you know, blocking for Miles Gaskin, blocking for Jake Browning on a very good Washington team that competes every single year in the Pac-12. Uh, very solid offensive tackle. Going to number three, it's going to be Orlando Brown from Oklahoma, 6'8", 345 pounds, built like my boy Trent Brown, formerly of the Florida Gators. I think he'll go first, second round. Anytime you get players that are above 330, you know, some teams get worried about their bend, get worried about their athleticism. So there is a chance he might slip into the second round. But I think when you look at his tape, you look at what he's done for Oklahoma for that run game and for protecting for Baker Mayfield, he's been exceptional. Uh, he's a 2015 freshman All-American, 2016 Big 12 offensive lineman of the year and he plays left tackle again for me personally with that i see that size you know you see a guy the inverse of what i said i like my tackles that is that is something that some teams want their right tackles to be the big maulers to uh, help out in the run game so i think he has that versatility to play both of those spots but the only thing is i'm uncertain about with that size almost 350 pounds are some teams going to be scared and want him to see like can he lose the weight and still maintain everything because there's not a lot of players right now that are playing above 330 in the nfl at the tackle spot anyways uh, going to number two, it is Mike McGlinchey from Notre Dame, 6'8", 320 pounds. Uh, it's 2016 second team All-American, can play left tackle, can play right tackle with ease, has played both those positions. Probably the most versatile offensive lineman uh, in this year's draft between playing those two tackle spots and having experience at both. Uh, again, another first-round grade prospect. Had some shaky games. Didn't look particularly good against Georgia. But again, kind of in the same mold as a Quentin Nelson, man. Quarterbacks don't get hit a whole lot, and they run the ball really, really efficiently, and that is because of the offensive line controlling line of scrimmage, and Mike McGlinchey is a big-time part of that. Uh, so, again, another first-round grade player. He's from Philly. Hey, you know, Philly likes our offensive lineman to be versatile. He kind of ticks off all the boxes. Wouldn't hate this pick. Uh, and then last but not least, the number one offensive tackle in this year's draft class is Connor Williams from the University of Texas, six foot six, three hundred and fifteen pounds, kind of like Trey Adams, who we're talking about from Washington. Uh, Connor Williams did suffer an injury, so there may be a chance he wants to return to Texas and have one final year. You know those Texas guys. The, uh, for as much as I'm not a huge fan of Texas, their players are incredibly loyal, and like they, if they if they go to the NFL or maybe it might be better to go back to college. It seems like more often than not, those Texas players will go back to college. I don't know why they haven't really been that good for the last decade. But Connor Williams is really really good. I know there are some people that think he's a little overrated, not as strong as you like to see in the NFL. But his you know every, his just hand fighting in the trenches, his ability to pull his athleticism. He's elite in almost every category. I would say outside of strength. And he can get stronger once he gets to the NFL and gets on an NFL uh, strength and conditioning program. Uh, 2015, first team freshman. 2016, first team All-American. 2016, first team Big 12. Uh, so the only thing that's really up in the air right now with Connor Williams is that injury. Is it going to affect him so that he can't attend the combine? If that's the case, it would be definitely in his best interest 
to uh, go back because he would, you know, I don't, I think whenever it is, doesn't matter if it's 20, the 2018 draft or the 2019 draft, Connor Williams is going to be a top 10 pick. So whatever, you know, his agent is in his ear, make sure he's as healthy as humanly possible before he declares. Um, again, I'm, I'm trying not to re- re- like revert everything back to my Philadelphia Eagles, but he'd probably be my favorite pick. After Saquon Barkley, if we had a choice of guys to get, because he is in that Lane Johnson mold of a smaller, more athletic tackle. And we've seen that really succeed here in Philadelphia on our offensive line. But there you go, guys. Those are 10 offensive linemen to keep an eye on. I mean, it's getting really tough, and, you know, there's only so much film. No one wants to watch film on offensive linemen. So I guess you kind of need to look maybe at my history of talking to you guys about the draft and take my word for it. Uh, But, yeah, interesting. I, I really do think the strength. One of the strengths of this year's draft class is for sure the offensive tackle position. So we will, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Only time will tell. But thank you guys for watching. As always, it's first time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section below what positions you want to see me do next. I mean, I'm thinking about just grouping defensive line, uh, just how we did the offensive line. So we'll do the top five ends and the top five D tackles. We'll do linebackers and then we'll do defensive backs. I figure three more videos. That'll be a good way to get our base down here for all of our um, mid-season, if you will, 1.0 rankings for all the college players. Uh, but yeah, let me know. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.